Renewal of the Spirit. Good morning, everybody. You know, at first, the whole idea of picking music off, off of YouTube was a challenge. And then I just quit caring about whether or not I was going to get blacked out. <laughs> so I just started picking old stuff. And so picking old stuff meant picking stuff that, you know, I kind of grew up with. And that song always gets to me. <clears throat> and I stopped and thought about it. It's like, why does that song always get to me? And it's because I, like many of you, have spent my life looking for something. And though we teach and we know and we understand that it's always right here, it's deep inside of us, it's something that exists within us. You know, we teach the power and presence that is in us and through us and all around us and in which we live and move and have our being and all that, you know, all that stuff we say. And I believe it. I do. And I know that there's a process of unfoldment and a process that where we internalize more and more and more and then we get to express it. It's a cycle. We breathe it in, we breathe it out. We deepen our understanding of it and we express more of it. We move our doubts and our uncertainties out of the way so that more of it can be expressed through us. We let go of that little conversation in the back of our heads that says, you know, you're not good enough. You're not behaving right. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You know, the little chatter committee back there that commit, you know, that's like always just like, rah, 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 rah. you know, like the mom in the, in, in uh, Charlie Brown, right? The Charlie Brown cartoons. And, rah, 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 rah. That's how it feels to me sometimes. I'm like, stop, just stop. And so that's kind of what got me into this idea, this concept for today, which is like renewal of the spirit. And initially, my initial thought of it was really not at all where this is going. But when we go to ministerial school, and one of the things that I taught when I was teaching um, the homiletics practicum, which is like the senior year public speaking and you know that kind of stuff. Was that never let a good never let never let a title get in the way of a good talk? So I'm loosely in the whole renewal of the spirit thing. It's tied to it, kind of, sort of. Let's see how it goes. Never know. But I want to start with is another quote from this thing called you. And it says the key to or this thing called life not this thing called you. The key to our whole understanding of life lies in the realization that life itself is pure spirit. It is an ocean of unmanifest being whose nature it is to take form. So spirit wants to take form. It's like the definition of love in the back of the Science of Mind textbook says that love is the givingness of spirit to its expression. So it tells us, it tells me at least, tells, tells us that life wants to express through us. It's waiting for direction. And it's always, it has one response and that is to say yes to what we know. Not just what we think necessarily, not necessarily what we believe to be true, but what we know. Something to which there is no doubt, no uncertainty. It's always going to take form and substance and expression based on what we know. We talk about this all the time. And so we get in this process of saying, okay, what do I believe? What are my doubts? What are my uncertainties? And we start doing affirmations and doing thoughts and doing spiritual mind treatments about all these things that we want to change. And we work, 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 work. We get in the cycle. I want to grow. I want to be, I want to become, and I'm going to do all this stuff. <sighs> It gets exhausting, doesn't it? 
I mean, we can tell the truth here. I'm going to tell the truth. I get tired. I get tired of growing. I get tired of learning. I get tired of doing all the work. You know, I, I, I hear a lot of chit chat and chatter from a lot of my friends who, you know, a lot of my new friends that I've built up over the last several years, last year and a half or so, life coaches and counselors and therapists and inspirational speakers from all over the world. Highly success, success, successful. And they're talking about authenticity and leaving a legacy and da 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 da. I'm like, God, please stop. Time out. So many hours in the day. And drive, 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 drive. Push, 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 push. And that's all great. And I get it. I understand where all that comes from. Right? There's a whole sense of urgency. Right? And here's what I know for me and for a lot of people that I work with and I talk to and I help and support. There's a time and place for that, yes. And there is a time and place for simply being. And allowing ourselves to simply be present with who we are today and have that be okay. Because if I'm constantly pushing back against me, what I'm saying in that moment is that I'm not okay. And if I want to begin to learn and grow and expand and express and become more of who I am, I need to be at peace with who I am. And then grow from there. Understand to begin in, with the premise that I am a divine idea within the mind of God. That is what I am. And I'm expressing as that in this moment to the best of my ability. I am bringing the sum total of who I, have, who I am, who I have become, everything I've done, everything I've learned, everything I've experienced and expressed to this moment to do the best I can. And that is what I hold to be true about each and every one of you here, each and every one of you out there online, each and every one of us on the planet, we're doing the best we can with what we've got. And we can learn and grow and express and experience more. We can be all of that. We can be all of who we are and more. And sometimes it feels, and I know, I know, but sometimes it feels like a battle. when I have to come to terms with maybe some things that I've done in my past that I don't like about me, some things that I've experienced that I don't like about what I've experienced, trauma, upset, addiction, all that stuff. We get to face and deal with all that stuff and it's gotta be, we've gotta be okay with it. And I was reading this little book um, called what was it called? Battleground by Jim Butcher, featuring a character called Harry Dresden. And at the end of the book, I'm, gonna need that. I'm, ch I'm changing order, Joe, I'm sorry. There we go. At the end of the book, Harry Dresden says this, and Harry Dresden is a wizard and he is a private eye, both, in Chicago, current day. And he says this, trouble was coming. Murphy was gone, and I had a hole in my chest that was going to take time to heal, but after a lot of time and hurt, it would heal. And right now, I was about to have a nice meal with people who cared about me, me and one another. There are a lot of ways to get, there are a lot of ways to get ready for a fight, and that's one of them. But it's even more important that you build something worth fighting for. And I read that, and it's actually the last line in the book. And I read something worth fighting for, and in the back of my mind, what it, what it translated into for me 
was <clears throat> building a life worth living. And that's one of the themes and one of the things that I've worked on with me was looking at my life and saying, how am I creating a life worth living? Not just for me, but for my kids, for my friends, for my family, for my, not just my blood family, but my chosen family, right? My life experience family, those 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people closest to me that I consider family. Am I building something worth fighting for? And is it something that I'm worth, that I'm willing to do the fight in me with? Not this, not, you know, not fight, fight, but to do the work that it takes to become comfortable and at ease with who and what I am and who and what I have become and who and what I am becoming, who, what the vision is I have for myself. It's like, am I going to ask the questions? And what questions am I asking? How can I be more? How can I be more present with me? How can I be more accepting and present with my life? How can I step into each moment and say, you know what, it's okay. It's not just okay, but I can celebrate this moment no matter what it is. I can look at the people, places, and things in my world and say, there is the power and presence of God. There, back of all that appears is love, is light, is truth, is beauty. Can I teach myself and work myself to that much of a degree that I can see past what others might see as pain and suffering and say, okay, yes, and. There is this appearance, and there too is the presence. And I can call that forth in this moment. It's like a story I've told you before about a, a, a practitioner teacher, you know, a religious science, science of my practitioner teacher. Uh, that I worked with, who told me that the practitioner, and we have licensed credentialed practitioners in Centers for Spiritual Living. We're trained in spiritual mind treatment, which is affirmative prayer, to work with people on prayer requests and work on, you know, spiritual healing and all this. And what this instructor told me was, if a practitioner walks into a hospital room and sees a sick person, they should be turning around and walking the other way. Point being that the practitioner is trained, that we are trained to walk in and not necessarily see that sick person. We are to see the divine idea of that individual back of what appears to see that person as whole, complete, and perfect in the face of what appears, in the face of what shows up. That's the point she was making. It's not to deny the experience, not to deny the current experience, but to see past it to the perfection. And that is the work that we do. That is the work we do in our own growth. That is the work we do in our own pathway. That is the work that I do for me and on behalf of anybody who puts in a prayer request. And, you know, when we sit here and we do our <clears throat> spiritual mind treatment every Sunday, we are affirming the divine idea back of what appears, calling something forth, creating the space for it. Because yes, indeed, we have, you know, we have times we're not feeling so good. We have you know, people experience all form and all form and experience of things in this world. You know, I was talking with a friend, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking with a friend of mine on the way up here this morning, because I mean, her, her daughter got sick and I, you know, I texted her. I said, Hey, how, you know, how so-and-so doing? She said, Oh, she's got strep and she's got this going on and that going on. I said, okay, well, I'm going to hold her and I'm going to see the truth. And she's like, great, thank you. 
I'm not saying she's not experienced that, but what I'm saying is there's a divine idea back of that <clears throat> that we can call forth and experience, call forth into experience, and make space for. Because at the level of consciousness, there is no time and space. It's all right now. We're all right here. And we can reach across those miles that appear and be present and affirm the truth. So when we say to ourselves, we are whole, complete, and perfect, when we affirm that about ourselves, how does that feel? Right? So say, you know, I'm laying on the couch like I was a couple of years ago before we knew it was COVID. And I woke up from a nap and I was shaking. I was had such a fever. And I don't trust me. Friends, ask any of my family. Once a year, maybe I get sick. And just a little bit, it's like 24 hours and boom, it's over. And I woke up from a nap, shaking. My fever had spiked so high. And I laid there and I went, wow, weird. And I did my work. And trust for me, when I get sick, it's like, for me, it's a message saying, you know what, you need to take a break. <laughs> you need to slow down because I get going, I get going real fast. I do. It's just my nature. And so I took three or four days off. And I don't really do that usually. Usually it's 24, 48 hours maybe. But this one took me down. And now I know what it was. Looking back. The point being, I did my work. Even in the midst of it. I just got online. I put a little prayer request into the World Ministry of Prayer. You can all do that too. Online. I said, hey. This is going on. And they're like, cool, we got you. And that's all I needed. Once I said, and it's frequently, that's all it takes. Is you put it into somebody else's hands and say, you know what? They're, they're, they've got that. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And just letting go of it mentally can flip a switch. Because I know somebody's got it. Somebody's taking care of it. It can be that simple. It can be that simple. So the question is, how do I create space for that? How can I move into that place where I'm just letting it go? Right? We turn from the condition to the truth. We turn from what appears to what we know to be true. We turn from doubt to faith, from fear to love, from uncertainty to confidence. And something larger, something greater, something more expressive, something more powerful than I am that's moving through me. This is the renewal that we can go through on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute basis. It's happening all the time. It's available to us all the time. When we decide to walk, to walk in life with a sense of reverence, Walk in life with a sense of reverence. Albert Schweitzer says this. By having reverence for life, we enter into a spiritual relation with the world. By practicing reverence for life, we become good, deep, and alive. We become good, deep, and alive. I like what he said there. We enter into a spiritual relation with the world. Wow. What a way to walk through the world. With that kind of an awareness, that kind of an expectation. Can I get to that place? Sure. I can, you can, we all can. We set the intention and we choose to live in a world that is greater than we expect or expect a world greater than or have an expectation of a world that is greater than I have imagined up until this point. 
There's always something larger, something greater, something beyond what has gone before. You know, it's like that phrase you like you, you hear me use a lot, up until now, right? Up until now, this has been. And that creates the open door going forward. Because I've drawn the line. I've drawn the line. So how do I keep showing up for myself? How do you keep showing up for you? Choosing to be something greater, choosing to be something more, choosing to live a life that is fuller and more expressive. We can be more, do more, experience more, express more, all of that. And from time to time, we get to step back and say, you know what, today I'm just going to be. We don't have to push hard. We just get to move the needle just a little bit today. And sometimes moving that new needle is taking the time to step back, sit down, and maybe just go for a walk. Or not. <laughs> or sit down and binge watch Netflix all day long. Sometimes that's what I need. Or maybe not. <laughs> Depending on where. I'm not even going to go down that road. I'm not even going to do that. Because that's okay. Some days, I'll admit, some days that's what I, I, I've done it. I just decide I don't want to play. And I'll watch all the Harry Potter movies back to back. <laughs> or all the Lord of the Rings movies back to back. Did I tell that story last week? Okay quick Starbucks story. So a couple of weeks ago, you know, sometimes at Starbucks at the drive through they put, they put the little chip jars out. Sometimes they put more than one and it's a voting thing. It's a way to generate tips. Have y'all seen this? No, maybe not. So I pulled up to Starbucks over Tempe market, not the not marketplace, but over like Dobson, Dobson in the 202. Yeah. And I pulled up and there's two tip jars out. One says Lord of the Rings and one says Harry Potter. And I'm like, no, I can't choose. And I had this little conversation with the person. I said, because when I was growing up, it was Lord of the Rings. And now, you know, now it's Harry Potter. So I can't choose. So I put a dollar in each one. <laughs> Mine was okay. We moved on. But it was a fun conversation. So it was fun. Point being, we get to choose all this stuff. We make thousands of choices every day. Some of them crucial, some of them important. Some of them are Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. <laughs> and we get to live with that and move forward and let it all be. It all matters and none of it matters. It matters as much as we make it. So am I going to choose to move through life with everything being so heavy, deep, and real? Or am I going to move through life and just be happy for just a moment, just a minute, maybe an hour or a day or two days or three days or the rest of my life? How am I going to move through this life? I get to choose. And sometimes it's harder to choose joy and happiness than others. I get it. I understand. Some days are hard. And those are the days we get to, if we want to, reach out and allow ourselves to be supported, loved, held, even if it's over the phone. I can't tell you how many times I sat on the phone in silence with a friend who just needed the support. We didn't have to talk. Just be there. Just be on the phone. And that's okay especially today with cell phones and AirPods. I can go and do a thousand things while I'm being present on the phone with somebody else. It's okay. You see, because we have the opportunity to not only be available for renewal for ourselves, but be available for, for, to help support renewal in others because we are not doing this alone. We're all here doing it together. And we get to celebrate each other and be present with each other and acknowledge the light that's in each other. 
Because every time we acknowledge it, we pull it a little closer to the surface, surface. Not only in others, but within ourselves. And so let's take this in to the silence today. And take this into prayer and affirmation for all of us. And so we know that it is in the power and presence of love and truth and joy that we live in this moment. That this power and presence is infinite and all around us. It is the very source and substance of our being and we acknowledge it as such in us and in everything and everyone we see. And so I speak this word for myself and for everyone here and everybody online and anybody watching now or later on the replay, knowing that all is well, that life is good and very good as each and every one of us, that the light of love and wisdom shines forth right now, sweeping aside any doubt, any uncertainty, any sense of lack or limitation and any sense of not feeling so good is swept aside because the light of truth shines forth in us, through us, right here, right now, enlivening every cell and fiber of our being, shining forth in each and every experience of this moment and every moment going forward, all is well, and life is good and very good as each of us. This is true. And wisdom and joy and love shine forth from us in this moment and make clear and clear, crystal clear and easy and smooth our path going forward. Making plain and safe our way is this love and joy. We know what to do, when to do it, in this and every moment. And oftentimes that is just to simply be and simply allow life to show up for us as us. And so we celebrate this truth, we celebrate life and love in each of us, in our community, our spiritual home, and the spiritual practices of any and all those around this world. Because this divine life shows up in the perfect way for each and every individual. We know this to be true. And again, we celebrate it with deep and abiding gratitude. We let it be so, and so it is. So it is.